Hello and welcome back to another episode of Game Brigade. I'm your host, Brian, and on this show, we do reviews, previews, and playthroughs of your favorite games. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. So today we're going to be taking a look at another Kickstarter. I feel like it's been a long time since I've done a Kickstarter preview review on the page. So I'm glad to kind of get back in the mojo and take a look at a Kickstarter. I've actually been looking at this one the last few days. And I wasn't going to make a video on it, mostly because there's been so much content already put on YouTube by other creators that I didn't feel like I needed to make a video. But to be honest, like last night I was sitting there and I was like, you know, my voice can be heard and maybe I have a different perspective on this game than other people. And, and my audience obviously wants to hear my perspective on games. And if I'm interested in this game, why not? talk about it. So we're going to be taking a look at Uprising Curse of the Lost Empire. This has got about 10 days left in the campaign. Uh, so I still feel like it's relevant for you guys if you're interested uh, to back this game or not. In regards to the giveaway, we still have the Oathsworn giveaway active. It is the final day as of the filming of right now, August 31st, to get a late pledge in for Oathsworn. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave a card up here. Uh, for the information on the lay pledge as well as the giveaway. So look for those two cards. I will have a word sometime in the video uh, for you guys to say for the entry for the giveaway. But let's take a chance here and cut over to the main page. So we're going to be doing something that I've been wanting to do more of, and that's watching these videos. So we're going to react and take a look at this uh, video here and see how this does. meets co-op in a grim, dark fantasy world. As the world is ending, take on the leadership of a fantasy race and lead their uprising against not only one, but two enemy factions, the Empire and Chaos. To win like the game, that. control territory, and win battles. If every player has more victory points than the Empire and Chaos, you all win together. At the start of your journey, choose one of 16 different heroes from eight highly asymmetric factions. There's two heroes per Discover faction. Discover a modular map. Raise an army to fight the Empire and Chaos. Conquer hexes and build defenses. Develop your engine from more than 100 cards. And did we mention quests and items? Back us now. They know how to, and to become get to part a of heart. Quests. The Uprising. <laughs> All right. So I, walk, I like to watch that because um, Instead of me sitting here rambling about what this game's about, uh, sometimes we can watch the video and get a better understanding from what the developer says the game's about. There are some takes from this that I want to talk about of why I think I'm interested in this game, uh, and then we can and you know decide if those are interesting for you. Uh, so overall, big picture here, the game is a cooperative. 4x game. I don't really think I could. Play. I, I honestly can't think of any that I own or that I played that might mix somewhat similar to that. You could say that like Spirit Island is a similar kind of feel with the way the board's laid out, but not really in the same vein as the way this game is built. So for one, this will be a unique game in many people's uh, collection, which I think is great. Uh, the the 4x aspect being cooperative. A lot of Forex games are usually cutthroat. A lot of people don't like that genre because of the aspects of having to fight your 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 friends. Uh, I do know that significant others don't like to attack their partners. So being able to play a cooperative game and still experience the Forex atmosphere is great. I also really like that it has two AI opponents. You've got the Emperor who is situated in the center, and then you have Chaos, who is going to be, you know, you know, depending on the cards, where, where they're located and where they spawn. And those factions, not only are they trying to attack you, they're attacking each other, which breathes more life into the world and to makes this a little bit more believable as you guys are all vying for power. One of the key things I want to talk about is that this game has a very high difficulty ceiling from what I'm being told. I haven't actually played this game. A lot of people have actually gotten prototypes and played this game. I'm not one of them. So I don't, I can't say for certain how I find this difficulty level or where the weight complexity is for me. But from what I'm reading and what I've seen, the game is not forgiving. And if you make a wrong decision, it can hurt the game. And generally the game can come down to the final turn, deciding who the victors are. And because of the fact that 
all of the player the players have to have more victory points than both ai that could cause a loss you could have if you're playing a three player game two people above and one person below and, and that will lose the game so it's going to require the group to really be on top of the cooperative experience um so that's going to change obviously your decision making process and you're not thinking for yourself more most forex games you're thinking for yourself how can i best build my my faction this is not a world building game although world builds in the sense like a forex it's more of a cooperative action uh action game uh so basing from that uh, how does the game play? There's gonna be several actions that you can take. Um, once all the players have taken their actions, the um, AI will then take their actions. They're gonna attack you or they're gonna be building uh, fortresses and whatnot. So, and you go back and forth and there's about three or four chapters depending if you want a shorter game or a longer game. So overall, those are the things I took away from what about this game. Also, it's got dice rolling mechanics. Some people like dice rolling mechanics because it adds a little bit of variety. Some people hate dice rolling mechanics because it adds that element of randomness. Uh, I'm generally used to dice rolling in a 4X game, so I'm totally fine with that. I don't think dice rolling is actually a bad thing. It kind of adds an element of, you know, like, oh, what did I get? Some people hate that, but I've never, I've never really minded it. It depends on the game, though. I guess it really, really depends on the type of the game. So we're going to... Oh, I forgot to hit the button here so you guys don't see all that stuff pop up. Um, we're going to go and take a look here at the um, pledge levels and talk about it. The first thing, I have wanted to kind of change the way I've done these videos. I've gone in a lot of sense of, you know, is this worth the back? Are you guys going to get um, a return on your investment if you were to buy this? I think that's an element of the Kickstarter that I like to talk about. Um, but I don't think it needs to be the whole thing because the reality is... I buy games not to just resell my games or to buy them for an investment. I buy them because I want to buy a game to have fun with that game and enjoy it. And sometimes there's also an element of collection aspect. I want this game in my collection for whatever reason. Uh, so I will still be talking about the proposition of the value of like, is this, is this a value to keep and are you going to be losing money? But it's going to be toning it down. I think there's other creators on the platform who are more in line with the financial aspects of the game. And I'll let them talk about the financial aspects more. And I'm gonna, I wanna focus on why I'm excited for pledge uh, games and if I should back it or if you guys should back it based on those ideals. So first off, this is a Kickstarter exclusive game. So if you want to buy this at retail, it's not gonna happen. So the only way we're gonna be able to get this game is at the Kickstarter level. There are two pledges currently, the core pledge and the all-in pledge. I'm glad that it's pretty upfront and the prices aren't that uh, abusive in terms of the all-in pledge. Sometimes you see all-in pledges and they're like $300, $400. You're like, man, this is just really starts getting heavy on the wallet. So core pledge, $79. The core pledge contains the base game and everything that is needed to play the game. It will include the four core factions with all the community unlocks. Now in the video, it did say that there's eight factions. I'm not so totally certain yet if those um, factions are stretch goals or they're going to be only available in this expansion pack we'll need to read further to see or we can just read right here and we'll see, see what it says so the all-in pledge for 129 130 contains everything from the core pledge and adds the arc nemesis expansion which contains four more factions of four more powerful end bosses so i answered my own question I should probably edit that out but i'm not going to um basically this expansion is going to be giving you more replayability value which to me in a 4x game I like having more factions. I like the combinations of being able to mix those factions up uh, to see what is more enjoyable. So to me, I feel like this expansion pack might need to be um, almost a necessity, but that's, that's for me because I just really think having the combinations of different races to try, see how things work, uh, really brings out the breadth of the game. Now I have read in one of the reviews that while this is asymmetrical in the sense that each faction plays a little different, they're not like so different that it's hard to understand one race from the other. They they all relatively play similar, um, but different in like tweaks. So take that for as it is. Again, I haven't played the game. I haven't actually got a chance to feel the components or, or see how those things interact. Uh, I'm just taking reviews of other creators and, and trying to get an understanding of this game. 
So we're going to scroll on down to what comes in the core box. Now, $79 for a non-miniature based game is relatively expensive. So we want to see what, what we're getting for that cost. So you're getting the game board, the rule booklet, storyboard, and the nemesis board. The kind of unique thing for this game is they're having standees for all the uh, characters and figures. So instead of miniatures or tokens, they're going to be doing the standees. But they're going to be high quality acrylic, which increases the cost. Um, they're going to be fully painted. We have to decide, like, I think it's unique. I think it's cool. Um, but it does increase the cost of the game. So and there's and there's no option, obviously, for like a cardboard only version. So, and it's also going to increase the weight of the game minusculely, but it does for shipping costs. So I'm curious what the shipping costs will be for this a little later. So all the standees are made of high quality acrylic. Each Legion and Horde has unique abilities on their own cards. So we're going to be getting the Horde cards. These are all the heroes. So I said you're going to have these factions. So these are the, the, the factions you can play. And each faction will have two heroes that you can choose from. Um, and these, so these are the double-sided hero cards. So one will be one, one will be the other. And then uh, you have your units. And so these are the units you can purchase. From what I gather, you're going to have units that are going to be more uh, cannon fodder units. And you're going to have more units that are more powerful abilities. Uh, but obviously, you don't want to just buy one or buy the other. You're going to have to build both. Generally, you want to balance the army uh, in, in games like this as you move along. The other thing, oh, I forgot to mention this earlier. This is a hex-based game. The video did talk about this. So you're going to have these hexes, and you're going to place them face down as you build out the map. And as you discover new territories, you reveal these maps, these territories, and then that'll have an effect or change the game in some way. I love that idea. I love the exploration aspect of the game. It's one of the reasons I, I, I just love board gaming. I don't know. The, ex the exploration aspect is really, really cool to me. And I really like these uh, garrison towers. And as you build up and make them stronger, they build up on each other. I think that's a really cool idea. I think I've seen that one other Kickstarter this year. I wish I could remember off the top of my head which one it is. But it was a, a Kickstarter that did this stacking on top of each other as you upgrade these buildings. I really wish I remembered when that was. Um, so these are curses. Chaos will destroy the map with curses, leaving behind a lifeless wasteland. I really... I'm curious more about the lore and backstory. I, I actually will be honest with you. I didn't look too much in the backstory of the game. I wanted to focus on the actual gameplay and the components. But as I was reading more, I was like, man, I really want to know, like, what did the Empire do? Who's Chaos? Um, so that's interesting to me. And I think there's a, a good depth here. If you are truly interested in looking into the backstory, that you could find something that's interesting. So we're gonna have a bunch of cards. Now the cards they have event cards. You're gonna have item cards. The item cards you can send your your hero on quests to get more items if you want to try to buff them up. And the event cards are revealed to basically say what's happening. What are the special rules of each turn uh, as you take them? You can do I think I said three or four chapters, and I think these are revealed on each chapter, which will say what happens. Um, so this is good. That adds a little bit of uh, variety. And they say that they are linen finished tarot size cards. So they're going to be nice and big. So more, more components. This is probably where you're getting a lot of your weight and costs from is a lot of these plastic, high quality plastic components, as well as, you know, you have the towers, you've got the standees, you're going to have quite a bit of standees. So this is where that cost is kind of coming into. So we're now we're seeing why we're in that $80 range for the costs. So these are Rebel Havens in action. Check it out. You see how you build it? It doesn't spin on its own, just so you know. It just sits there. It doesn't spin. We have resources. I believe the resource is salt. Yeah, salt is the new gold. And you always need food and plunder. So that's salt. I think it's interesting that they're using salt as a resource. Again, adding more to the idea of the world, building out this world, you know, saying how, how valuable salt could be. You know, if you're in a salt flat, man, you'd be, you'd be really rich, right? But then you're just not going to be able to find any food because it's pretty barren. And then you have the modular inlay here with lids. I think it's great. Whenever a game wants to create an actual modular system for their game for storage solution, I love it. I always give props to any game company that actually makes one that works. That's the thing. It's got to work for realistic. Like if you decide to sleeve your cards, are these thick enough to sleeve cards? Like these are all important questions. They generally answer those through updates. Um, so you have to check that to see if you're going to have that. So here's the expansion. This is the one I was talking about that based on the ability to get more 
uh, factions, I feel like this expansion might be worth it. So let's take a look through the expansion. We've got the rule book and add the arc nemesis to uprising. Four Imperial Dostandis, so two more legions and two of the dreaded arc nemesis. We have two new horde and two arc nemesis. The Kraken, the Kraken and the curses. Okay, cool. So these are pretty cool. I like the arts. I mean, and I like that these are like evil demon looking stuff. These are pretty normal looking guys. I mean, this thing, this is a Drake. Looks pretty cool. The Draco Lich, it looks like. We have more cards. This is what I was talking about, though. You have these four, these four more factions with two heroes each to add that variety to your gameplay. Interesting that the colors are somewhat similar to the other factions' colors. I mean, do we have a tan guy? I don't like this. So they're not entirely similar. I saw the orange and this blue, and they were kind of similar. Let's see here. Do we have an orange and blue? We have this kind of tan and aqua. They're close. They're not they're not identical but they're close all right so we don't need to talk about the factions like you're you're getting all the same stuff you're getting six unique double-sided hexes four home hexes and two advanced sea uh, towers so you're getting more hexes for building stuff more havens more inserts and whatnot so let's talk about the add-ons this is where you can kind of get heavy in terms of buying stuff dice packs unfortunately in a game like this that has a unique set of dice sometimes if you're having a higher player count so three or four players it is beneficial to have more dice sometimes these publishers don't even give you enough dice to play the game as it is and so you have to like roll and pick up dice and roll again hate that so sometimes these dice packs can be necessary but i usually don't know until i play the game but in a game like this that's going to be exclusive you might be taking a chance not knowing if you're going to need more dice or not. The playmat's interesting because the playmat is not going to be available through the pledge manager, which is not common. You're going to have to purchase it separately through this company, Deep Cut Studios. So you'll have to click it here and buy this playmat if you want this specific playmat. I'm not totally in love with that. If you're wanting the playmat, which I think in a game like this, playmats are always great, but I don't like that it's not being offered through the pledge manager. They'd rather, they, they basically went to a third party and said, hey, we want to play Matt. We don't want to produce it. We will give you a cut if you produce it for us. It's okay. Um, I just I just don't like it. I just don't like it, especially with this game that's going to be shipping in, I think, 2021 August, I believe is the ship date. Like, when am I going to get this play Matt? Is it going to be shipping with my game? Or how are they handling it? These are questions that will probably be answered at some point. I just, yeah. And then item pack, more items equal more fun. Add 20 items to your deck. I wish this wasn't an add-on. I feel like this could be added as a stretch goal, um, but what can you say? So how to play, we're not gonna cover that because we've already kind of talked about the how to play. We're actually gonna skip on down to the shipping level and discuss shipping. Because this talks a lot about the, um, what I was talking about, the, the lore, if you're interested. This has all the information about the lore. We're not gonna cover all that lore. Oh my gosh, shipping, where are you at? There we go. Okay, before we get to the shipping, preface, I feel like I've been told that the shipping is fairly high, so let's see if that's true. Okay, so shipping costs, estimated shipping costs. The United States, all in pledges be 23 and 26. UK and European Union, 20 to 32. This is fairly high. Australia, 27 to 31. Uh, New Zealand, uh, 53 to 50, uh, 59. This is fairly high, especially for these uh, regions, Alaska and Hawaii. I mean, that is very brutally high. Um, overall for the US, 23 to $26. It is higher than I'd like. Um, generally, I see games at this point between like $15 to $17 for a game of this breadth. Uh, but because this is a first time publisher, which I didn't mention earlier, it's a first time publisher, they generally don't have the um, resources to get discounted shipping rates from the you know quartermasters logistics or whoever they're choosing to use as their shipping so it costs a little bit higher and you don't get the subsidy cost like cmon games will get you um so this is just the aspect of sometimes when you're purchasing a game from a, a, a newer developer you have higher in ship, shipping costs uh so they do have uh stuff here between like what includes what if you are part of the uk and european union which i know some of my audience are it's about 15% right now is from the UK or the European Union. Um, 
check to make sure that this uh, falls into your your category. So shipping is a little high. Don't think it's a, a deal breaker, but twenty five dollars is not something to like scoff at. It's it's fairly high. So that's the end of the Kickstarter in terms of this. Um, we're gonna go and scream. Actually, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna cut back to me and just wrap up. So overall, should you back this game? I think this game is awfully unique. I think there's a lot of benefits to this game in terms of the gameplay from all of the reviews and previews that I've seen. It looks pretty interesting. I'm a little nervous about how cutthroat it is. Um, are, is this going to be a game where it's just so hard it's not going to be fun? Like how competitive is it going to be to... I'm going to stop hitting my thing because it's making the camera shake. How competitive is this going to be to have the game like be a chance of like beatable. I do know that there's scaling you can do to make it a little bit easier, but I don't necessarily want that. I want to be able to beat the game on how it's designed. Now, this reminds me of pandemic. Uh, pandemic was a brutally hard game for us when we first started playing it, especially when we tried to play it like normal levels. We're like, man, how is this game beatable? Eventually you figure out the system and then it feels like it's too easy. So I'm wondering how this game will play with that. I don't think that this will have the same effect as pandemic classic does for me at least in my play group, but you never know. Um, overall, I'm excited about this one. I, I haven't backed anything like this game in a while, so I'm curious if, uh, if I'm gonna end up backing this one. I will then, of course, because it's still August right now, it'll be in my Kickstarter um, callback, which will be coming out in about two days regarding any games I've backed in the month of, of August. So, that's a little good for you guys because this one's still technically going. Normally, I don't cover the callbacks until the thing's over. So you will know about that later. Uh, let's talk about the giveaway. So if you're here still for the giveaway, which I know many of you are. In fact, some of you guys are cheating because I can see uh, where my retention levels are at in terms of like where people are like they're really high. Then it kind of goes down. At the end, it's spiking. So I'm like, hmm, you guys are just coming in to watch the end of the videos. Maybe I'll change it up and put it in the middle of the video or something. Um, I don't really care, actually. I want you guys to get the uh, the bonus entries. To me, it's it's more fun having to comment to everyone. So today we're actually going to have the, uh, the word is going to be Nemesis based off of the creator Nemesis Games. So leave a comment down below for in the Nemesis somewhere along the lines. Um, and let me know uh, what you guys think of this game. Are you going to be backing it? Is it something that interests you? If you like this video and you want more Kickstarter reviews, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. Also, let me know what you guys think of the, the format changing from the perspective of financial to more like gameplay and is this going to be enjoyable? Because I feel like that's more in line with my personality. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I appreciate you guys staying to watch the end of the show. I try to keep these relatively quick in terms of recording time. So hopefully I didn't ramble on too much. I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye. I forgot to add one thing. I wanted to make sure I brought this up. There is currently a giveaway for Uprising on Shelf Clutter's channel. I will put a card up here for his video regarding that because if you have a chance to win this game and it's still active, I want to give an opportunity to everyone to win this. If you also haven't seen Shelf Clutter's channel, give him a subscription. Let him know you came from my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.